pottery has been my hobby for about 20 years. I first realized something was wrong a few years ago. Making my figures became more and more difficult. One thing that I love doing is just sitting down, relaxing, and going through our photograph albums of the family. And bit by bit, I began to realize that I was having problems telling who was who. I had the earlier signs of macular degeneration. Although I can see where I'm putting the brush, I can't see after I've done it what it looks like. And so I'm unable to paint properly, which meant virtually that I had to give it up. In an ever-aging population, age-related macular degeneration is still the leading cause of irreversible blindness in the industrialized world. As the number one cause of visual impairment amongst persons aged over 75, it is a great concern in public health. For exudative AMD, treatment options have been revolutionized over the past decade with the introduction of intravitreal injections of antivascular endothelial growth factors. While the treatment for exudative AMD is widely available, reduced near visual acuity is still a growing problem for patients with macular degeneration. A number of external magnifying devices are currently available for use, but these have limited acceptance by some patients. Even with the magnifier, I found it difficult to read newspaper print, especially any article which included long words. The end of words tends to disappear completely. An ideal intraocular magnifying device should have the following characteristics. It should provide sufficient magnification, it should be easy and safe to implant, and be independent of the lens status of the patient. It should not reduce the distance vision or the visual field in the implanted eye and it should be reversible and also affordable. One such device, developed in cooperation between Professor Chariot and Medicontour Medical Engineering, is the Chariot Macular Lens, also known as the SML. It's a single piece hydrophilic IOL with a water content of 25%. It has an overall diameter of 13 mm and an optic size of 6 mm. The central 1.5 mm of the optic has a power of 10 diopters, while the rest of the optic is plano. This IOL is implanted in the ciliary sulcus as a piggyback IOL. It has a four-point fixation with flex haptics. This non-torque design provides excellent stability. It has a convex concave optic and a 360 degree polished round edge to prevent iris chafing. The central optical portion that provides the magnified image will dominate when the patient focuses on near objects only, but will not influence far vision significantly when the patient focuses on distant objects through a dilated pupil. The proof of concept on this device was first published by Professor Chariot in the August 2015 issue of the Journal of Cataract and Refractive Surgery. Recent human cadaver studies have shown that SML sits very nicely in the ciliary sulcus, providing good clearance from the primary IOL in the capsular bag due to the convex concave optic configuration. Following ethics approval in April 2015, a prospective European multi-centre clinical trial was launched in October of the same year on the visual and refractive outcome of SML implantation in macular degeneration. For this trial, 50 patients have undergone monocular SML implantation. Following a clear corneal 2.2 mm incision, OVD is injected in the anterior chamber. The SML is loaded into a special custom-made cartridge. A 
and is atraumatically injected in the ciliary sulcus. It's quite a scary thought that somebody is, is going to operate on your eyes. But uh, the clinic were fantastic and there was real support, real encouragement. And the surgery itself, I have to say, was completely painless. Three, six and 12 month follow-up data show that the SML provides excellent improvement in uncorrected near vision in the implanted eye. This improvement strongly corresponds with preoperative testing with plus six diopters. Predictability of a postoperative outcome based on the preoperative testing has proven to be crucial for indication, communication with patients, and giving them realistic expectations. As expected, the SML did not affect the corrected distance vision in this group of patients, as this implant is designed to only improve the reading vision. There was no change in the intraocular pressure over a period of one year following the implantation of the chariot to macular lens. To reach optimal reading performance, patients are required to undergo two to three weeks of training. I had to train my mind and my eyes to accept these new lenses. This involved reading text for about 20 minutes a day. Vision is just so important to everyone, to everyday life. Guess what? I'm back making pottery again.